In this video, we'll be discussing the evolution of LEGO Star Wars sets and comparing the biggest differences between new and old LEGO Star Wars sets. Let's go. The LEGO Star Wars theme was released in 1999, and yes, some of those original sets are super nostalgic, but I'm not gonna lie, some just ain't looking so hot. But luckily, as LEGO evolved and made new pieces and minifigures, the quality and accuracy of sets got a lot better. And some sets have even been remade over five times. Don't get me wrong, old LEGO Star Wars sets are super cool and nostalgic, but I just thought it'd be interesting to compare some of these older sets with the newer versions. But before we get into this list, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any more videos like this. 2005 was an incredible year for LEGO Star Wars, and in my opinion, one of the best years since the overwhelming majority of sets revolved around the release of Star Wars Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith. There are three sets that came out during this wave that I want to compare with the newer models, and those are the Darth Vader Transformation Set, the Clone Turbo Tank, and the Ultimate Lightsaber Duel Set. The 2005 Darth Vader Transformation Set was cool because you could literally turn Anakin into Darth Vader, just like the set says. <laughs> But for me, this set was kind of lacking and just looked kind of bland because it used a lot of generic pieces. But the new Darth Vader transformation set that was released in 2017 looks way better. It comes with super realistic minifigs and has a great functionality to put Vader's suit and helmet on. The clone turbo tank is also such a classic set and I loved playing around with it as a kid. But the newer 2010 and 2016 versions utilize new tire pieces and wheel pieces and just have an overall better design. And the Ultimate Lightsaber Duel set is yet another classic and is still one of my all-time favorites. It came with both Obi-Wan and Anakin and they had lightsabers that actually lit up in the dark if you pressed on their heads. This was a feature LEGO tried out only in 2005 with a total of five minifigures and it's one of the coolest things I've ever seen in a LEGO set and I don't know why. LEGO doesn't implement it nowadays, Bruh. but on top of that, it comes with stands for each of the minifigures so that you and your friends, if you have any, can duel each other. I will do what I must. Now, this is an instance where I believe that the older set was better than the newer one because LEGO remade this set in 2020 and called it the Duel on Mustafar set. And the set's all right and comes with some decent builds and figures, but I'm sorry, nothing can compare to the original 2005 set. The first LEGO Sandcrawler also came out in 2005 and was a really solid set for the time and had a lot of interior space. And a UCS Sandcrawler was made in 2014, but for this video I'm just going to compare the two playscale models since the UCS version is at a much larger scale. The 2018 LEGO Sandcrawler had a similar scale as the 2005 version, but a lot of the building techniques were similar to the UCS version. Next up is the MTT, and LEGO has come out with three of them thus far, and I'm just gonna be blunt, the 2000 version was terrible, the 2007 version was incredible, and the 2014 version was good, but not as good as the 2007 version. The 2007 MTT is the biggest of the three, the design looks great, and it comes with tons of battle droids. LEGO has made a total of four Imperial Shuttles, not including the UCS version, and the 2001 version is definitely the worst of the three, Bruh. but not gonna lie, the 2005 version is probably my personal favorite just for nostalgia's sake. I mean, the front cockpit still looks horrible, but it was just so cool that it came with Vader, Palpatine, four Stormtroopers with leg printing, two Royal Guards, and an Imperial Officer. The newer 2015 Tidarium and the 2021 version definitely look the best because they use new pieces and building techniques, but the 2005 version will always hold a special place in my heart. Now, the T-16 Skyhopper is a really unique vehicle in Star Wars and isn't shown hardly at all in Star Wars except for when Luke is playing around with the toy model of it in A New Hope. But LEGO has made a version of this ship in 2003 which looked okay for the time, but it was remade in 2015 and looks much better. Darth Maul's Sith Infiltrator or Scimitar is a really cool ship from the prequels and LEGO has made four versions of it in 1999, 2007, 2011, and 2015. Each one of these models progressively got better with each remake. I really wish I had picked up the 2015 version back in the day because now it's worth quite a pretty penny on eBay and BrickLink. The Playscale Millennium Falcon is another set that has been made a ton of times. Six of them have been made if we include the Kessel Run Millennium Falcon from Solo. Per usual, the 1999 version was looking pretty rough, 2004 was a little better and at least had a better looking cockpit and panels that opened up. 
2011 looked even better and 2017 was pretty similar to the 2011 but was redesigned for the force awakens and the 2019 version is probably the best overall play scale millennium falcon the proportions look the best and there are no gaps in the panels at all i still think it's pretty funny though that they've used the same cockpit piece for the millennium falcon since 2004. Now, I could have put a couple UCS sets on this list, but honestly, the improvements for some of the UCS remakes aren't that substantial that I need to note them in this video. But I will mention the UCS Star Destroyer, which first came out in 2002. This was also when LEGO used the yellowish gray color before they switched to the new light bluish gray color in 2005. But the 2002 UCS Star Destroyer used magnets to hold the panels together, which was a very interesting choice, but... If you have this set on display for a long enough time, the magnets start to wear out and the set just kind of falls apart after a while. But luckily, LEGO remade this UCS Star Destroyer in 2019 with a much stronger design and an easier way to pick up the set for transportation. The T-47 Airspeeder or Snowspeeder for you non-Star Wars nerds is another set that has been remade countless times and the first one that was released in 1999 was actually gray which I personally believe to be a more accurate color for the Snowspeeders but ever since that 1999 version LEGO switched to a white color scheme for the Snowspeeders and hasn't looked back since. There have been a total of seven Snowspeeders that have come in LEGO sets since 1999 not including UCS sets, microfighters, or polybags. And I've got to say, after the 2004 version came out, the Snowspeeder design hasn't really changed that much besides minor details, and I personally still don't think they look very accurate, especially in the front. Next is Luke's Landspeeder, which you're probably sick of hearing about if you're an avid LEGO Star Wars fan, but if you don't include the 2022 UCS version that came out for May the 4th, we've gotten six Luke's Landspeeders since 1999 which is more than the number of boxes of mac and cheese in my cupboard. Is that too many or not enough? I don't know, you tell me. The design has definitely improved if we compare the 1999 version and the 2020 version, which I would expect since there's over 20 years of LEGO technique advancement between the two, but I would totally be fine if LEGO never made another Luke's Landspeeder for all of eternity. The ATST or Chicken Walker, as the distinguished folks call it, has also improved a lot over the years. I mean, if we compare the 2001 version to the newest 2022 version, there's just a massive difference here between the two models. Nah, but for real, the design of the ATST has definitely improved over the years, but we just don't talk about the Junior's ATST or the First Order ATST. LEGO has also made tons of X-Wings, and like the first Snowspeeder ever made, the first X-Wing was also light gray instead of the white color scheme the newer Red 5 models have. And if we compare the 1999 version to the 2018 or 2021 version, there's definitely a massive difference with part usage, building technique, and functionality. But after the 2012 version, LEGO has pretty much mastered the design of the X-Wing in LEGO form. TIE Fighters are another ship that used to look way different back in the day. The first one came out in 2001, and I'm sorry, it just looks so bad. I mean, it got the general shape down, so that's something. But the wings have blue markings on them, which I guess in some scenes in the original trilogy, the gray on the TIE Fighters kind of look like a light shade of blue. But this blue color looks really bad on this TIE Fighter. The cockpit also looks okay for being made in 2001 but it took them a really long time to make a better piece for it. I mean, even this piece that they used in the 2012 version didn't look super great. But the First Order TIE Fighter from 2015 actually had a good looking cockpit. The 2018 TIE Fighter from Solo is definitely my favorite and looks the best in my opinion. I would say the newest 2021 version, but the wings are just too small and the proportions just don't look right. The first Boba Fett Slave 1 came out in 2000 and it looked pretty rough. And don't ask me why, but the 2006 remake is probably my favorite Slave 1 model, besides the UCS version, but it's just really nostalgic for me. The 2010 version looks pretty solid and is also pretty comparable to the 2019 version. However, LEGO took a pretty big step back in 2021 with the new Boba Fett starship from The Mandalorian. Actually, believe it or not, it's a similar scale to the 2000 version, and the detail and shaping of it looks great, but it's just way too small for a $50 set. The Moss Espa Pod Race from 1999 is such a classic set, 
and a similar set was remade in 2011, but it was only Anakin and Sebulba's pod racers. But the designs for both the pods in the 2011 version were greatly improved and came on stands made out of transparent, clear Technic pieces. And for the 20th anniversary of LEGO Star Wars in 2019, LEGO released just Anakin's pod racer, and it has some subtle improvements from the 2011 version and uses the same pieces that are used for Palpatine's <laughs> lightning for the energy beam between the two engines. The AAT is a separatist and or trade federation tank, most notably from the Phantom Menace and the Clone Wars TV show, and LEGO has made two versions of each of these, and they differ quite a bit. The first trade federation MTT was released in 2000, and it looks pretty decent in my opinion, and I honestly prefer this one over the 2015 version, which was scaled down way too much. And same goes with the separatist AATs from the Clone Wars. The first one that came out in 2009 was much larger and detailed compared to the brand new 2020 version. But let me know which versions you prefer down in the comments below. The last sets that I'm going to compare are the three playscale Obi-Wan Starfighters. The first one was released in 2002 and didn't look too bad for the time. The next remake came out in 2017 as a part of the Obi-Wan Starfighter with Booster Ring set, which is one of the many sets I regret not picking up when it was available. Bruh. The Starfighter looks great with an updated part selection, but I personally think the cockpit sits up just a little bit too high and doesn't really transition that well into the rest of the ship. Now, the newest 2022 Obi-Wan Starfighter looks incredible in my opinion. The only downsides are the two stud shooters and the gaps where the wings connect to the body of the ship, but it also comes with a brand new Obi-Wan figure and Tan Wei and Lego for the first time ever. All right, guys, that's going to do it for my comparison of new and old LEGO Star Wars sets. If you have any other sets that you think make great comparisons, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching. This video took a really long time to make, so I really appreciate it. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I will catch you in the next video. Peace out.